everybody and welcome back again to another video. Today we're going to be talking about this solar telescope. This is a Coronado Solar Max 40. It is the smallest scope in their lineup of Coronado. Now this model has been discontinued as of several years ago, but you can still get 60, 80 and larger millimeter aperture solar telescopes still today from Coronado. Now Coronado used to be a standalone company. Then they got bought by Mead and then Mead went bankrupt and got bought by Orion. And so Orion is trying to rebrand the Mead and Coronado lineups and they're trying to revive them, get them back on the market, which is fantastic because Coronado makes really great solar telescopes out there. And there really isn't a whole lot of competition in the solar telescope market. So it's always nice to see Coronado making a comeback in sales and production. Now this is a 40 millimeter objective, which means it is tiny up here at the front. It is only but a two inch aperture, very, very small. But you have to understand that on the sun, you don't need a whole lot to see a lot of the solar features. Obviously, the larger the aperture, just like deep sky imaging, the more detail you'll be able to pull in, the higher magnification you'll be able to utilize on the sun with a larger telescope. The problem with solar telescopes, though, is the bigger you get, they quickly climb in the thousands in price. This little telescope, which is the smallest thing in my equipment lineup, when it retailed was about $1,600 just for the optical tube. Now in today's world, that can buy you an eight inch SCT. I mean, it just goes to show that solar telescopes are very high priced and they're high priced specifically because they have this thing up here called an etalon, which is a hydrogen alpha element up front here. Now on some of them, like the PST, which is also made by Coronado, you can adjust that etalon a little bit to see both sunspots only and the hydrogen alpha wavelengths. This is very similar where it has a tunable dial up on the top where you can adjust the same thing. You can adjust the clarity, the angle of this element up front to give you the most detail. Or if you wanna cancel out the hydrogen alpha, you just keep spinning it one direction and it'll cancel it out and only show you the sunspots. These include just simply the optical tube. It does include a 1.25 specifically designed solar diagonal. And where the cost comes into this, not only with the hydrogen alpha, is a thing called a blocking filter. When you look down here in the focus or draw tube, you're gonna notice in the diagonal, there's a hole and that size of the hole is called the blocking filter and that's blocking some of the wavelengths of light to give you the full hydrogen alpha look the size of that blocking filter is what can be very expensive let's just say a five millimeter is 499 but a 10 millimeter is 799 and a 15 millimeter is 999 I'm just throwing those out there for just an example. But as you increase the blocking filter size, you will increase the price of the telescope simply because you're allowing more light to come through the diagonal, which is better for photographic reasons, which is better detail that will come through. Now, the thing is with visual observing, a 10 millimeter is pretty much gonna be just fine. You're really not gonna get a whole lot more with a 15 unless you're doing photographic. That's where it will make the difference for you. Now these solar telescopes are very simple. That you just have an end cap, you have a tunable dial here for the etalon, you have a focuser and a diagonal. You point it at the sun, you focus it up and off you go. Now the only thing that is a little bit different is there's three screws back here and these three screws actually are your focus screws. So once you take those your focuser slides in and out to achieve the focus. And then to fine tune the focus, you've got this dial here with a 10 millimeter adjustment. And you just dial that fine tune in and out to achieve that perfect focus. Now, if you're coming from something like a Coronado PST, like I used to have, this is a huge step forward. Even though it's the exact same size aperture at 40 millimeters as the PST, this, in my opinion, beats that PST hands down. And the reason for that is, is because the PST has a very small prism for the diagonal in the back. It's not a reflective mirror. A prism is not optically as good as a full diagonal like this. And so whenever you take your eyepiece out, your blocking filter right there at the top of the PST is tiny, which means your field of view is like looking through a tube. And that's a problem. 
when, especially when you've got a camera in there, you've got to have the sun just centered correctly to get a full illumination of the sun's disc. This, in my ASI 183, which is a relatively large chip, you can put the sun anywhere in that field of view on that chip and you'll get still full illumination because of the larger blocking filter and because of the higher brightness factor. On the PST versus this visually, this is easily probably four to five times brighter with the sun just visual observing with the same 20 millimeter eyepieces. So the prism versus the diagonal, the diagonal wins hands down. And also the blocking filter being larger on the Coronado, hands down receives a lot more brightness and clarity into the eyepiece. Eyepieces you can buy specifically designed from Coronado or from certain solar telescope manufacturers, specifically designed for solar telescopes. I personally have never noticed that much of a difference. Some people have. That's just my opinion, so take it for what it's worth. You can, of course, experiment on your own and see what you like, what uh, looks better to you, of course. Now, I'm going to be taking a picture with this here in just a few moments, and the 183 chip does amazing at capturing the full sun's disk. Sometimes with, with solar telescopes, you do have to use a UV IR cut filter when you're using cameras like the ASI cameras because it plays with the hydrogen alpha. You need to add that filter in order to for the camera to see that hydrogen alpha data. And so sometimes you do have to invest in one of those filters. Some cameras though include a UV IR cut, which then you're fine. You just slip your camera in, it'll see the uh, spectrum just fine. So let's go take a picture and see what this baby will deliver to us. got the camera inside the Solar Max 40. We've got the full disk of the sun right here on the laptop screen in the ASI studio. It's not a very good uh, video trying to capture the screen, but you can see the sun's there. We've got a couple sunspots, some features on there. So I'm going to take a couple thousand frames of this and we're going to stack them up and see what our final image is with the Solar Max 40. That about wraps up our review for the Solar Max 40 today. As you can tell from the photos, this telescope is more than capable of showing you amazing features on the sun, such as sunspots, prominences, and solar flares, among much, much more stuff. This telescope is not available anymore in today's market, but you can buy an equivalent 60 millimeter aperture Solar Max, and I would highly suggest you check that out. Lunt also makes amazing solar telescopes as well as a few other companies. Daystar has a basically an electronic eyepiece. It's called the Quark that allows you to transform any telescope into a hydrogen alpha telescope for the looking at the sun. So if you already have something like a 90 millimeter APO refractor, you can use that Daystar filter. And it's basically an electronic eyepiece that fits in where your normal eyepiece would go. You do have to power it up, but it does give you full hydrogen alpha capabilities. Now this telescope, if you can find one on the used market, I would absolutely grab one in a heartbeat. I actually bought this one for a measly $600, which in today's world, that is cheap for a solar telescope. You can't even touch a Coronado PST for that much money. And this is far better with the ability to tune the Etalon for detail and performance for you. As always, thank you so much for joining Clear Skies to You, and I'll see you next time.